Hi there, so today I'm going to be showing you something called an interference pattern. We're going to get the interference pattern on this screen here. We're going to use a laser light pen. And we're going to be applying a principle that you'll probably be familiar with from earlier on in your physics called diffraction. What's going to happen when the light approaches this single slit here, this gap, which is approximately the same wavelength as light, is we're going to get a semicircular diffraction pattern. Then I'm going to show you through this multiple slit, this double slit, and you're going to therefore get two diffraction patterns next to each other, and that's going to cause our interference pattern. That's going to cause a situation where two light waves meet each other and actually add up to zero, to nothing at all. So light and light equal darkness. I think that's absolutely fascinating. And then I'm going to show you with these two diffraction gratings how we get even greater spacing between our bright fringes, between the points at which two light waves get, uh, meet and make something really bright, they add up to make a lot more brightness, and the points at which two light waves meet and just cancel each other out and make darkness. It's really fascinating. Bear with me, it does get a little bit tricky, but I hope I can make it make sense to you with the aid of a diagram. So that is the standard diffraction pattern. You can see the light just spreading out. So this is the double slit diffraction pattern. You can see the bright fringes, the bit where you're getting constructive interference. And you can see in between them the points where you're getting zeros, you're getting no light at all. Now I promise you, waves of light are hitting those points. They're just adding up to nothing. They're interfering with each other to make a point of zero energy transfer. And this one is on the screen with the first of the diffraction gratings. This one's got 80 lines per millimetre, so very, very close together indeed. And you see now the maximums are further apart. And actually, you can, if I show you against the wall, you can see they're spreading right out and filling the wall as well. Now this time we're getting one really, really bright maximum in the middle there. We've got loads of light concentrating at that point. And on the walls over here, we're getting many little secondary maximums at the side. So we'll just imagine this is our laser light coming towards two slits. It's all in phase because it's laser light so these lines represent the peaks of the wave, in other words the wave fronts. And they're going to approach these gaps which are roughly the same size as the wavelength. So when they meet those gaps you're going to get the two diffraction patterns to semicircular diffraction patterns which you can start to see are overlapping. So now that you can see where the wave fronts are overlapping you can also see where there's going to be points of constructive interference. Where the wave fronts are overlapping the waves are always going to meet in phase. In other words it's always going to be a peak and a peak or a trough and a trough. And that means the two waves are always going to add together to make a much higher maximum so what I'm going to go through now is I'm just going to go through and mark on all the points where two peaks are meeting on this diagram. I'm just going to mark the, those points of constructive interference with crosses. There we go. Okay, so I haven't quite done them all, but I've done enough for you to see that those points where we're always getting constructive interference are all kind of lining up and they're spreading out as they're moving along through the space in front of the gaps. We call these points maxima, in other words, points where maximum energy transfer happens because they're going right the way from double the height of a peak right the way down to uh, double the depth of a trough, if you can imagine that. So, so far, we've only really got half the story. Uh, the dark lines, I said, represent the peaks or uh, the peaks at this point in time. And what I've done is added some dotted lines in between them to represent the troughs at this moment in time. Now, what happens when a peak meets a trough? Well, that's uh, a positive and a negative, and that adds up to zero. So at every point where a peak meets a trough, we have a point of zero energy transfer. So what I'm going to do is go through and find those points and mark them with a little naught, a little zero. So there we go. You can see that those points, the points of destructive interference, or zeros, all line up as well. I'm just actually thinking about the points where a trough meets a trough. That too would be a constructive interference. So just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to go through and mark them with crosses too. There we go. So that's my interference pattern. Really appeals to my sense of completeness there. So I'm going to join up the um, 
points of constructive interference and I'm going to do that with a solid line and I'm going to do, join up the points of destructive interference, the zeros, with a dotted line and then I'm going to hopefully be able to show you what happens when I put a screen across that. There we go, so any point on those continuous lines, that is a point of maximum energy transfer and any point on the dotted lines, that is a point of zero energy transfer. That point will have either, if it's water, will have no wave on it at all, it will not move. Or if it's light, that point will actually be dark. That's the really interesting point about this, is where light and light meet and make darkness. So two light waves meet and make nothing at all. So let's imagine I just put a screen across there where I've done that line there. What would I see on that screen? We can do, work that out by interpolation. So what I've done here is I've just used a ruler to mark on on this screen where the points of maximum, so the first one, and where the points of zeros would be. And that's going to allow me to draw out a wave, the wave pattern you would see in this dimension, if you were looking at the screen from this side, the wave pattern that you would see on that screen. It would be a standing wave and it would be going from maximum to minimum at these points, but it would be staying forever at zero at these points where they cross this zero line here. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So there we go. It's a standing wave with points where the wave goes from maximum to minimum or peak to trough, peak to trough all the time and points where it never moves, where it never leaves the zero. Absolutely fascinating. So points of constructive interference and points of destructive interference. Maximums and zeros.